wants us to follow. Because of the great controversy between good and evil, Health Ministries encourages church members to avoid practices rooted in non-Christian philosophy and belief. As specific practices without a firm scientific base that uh, 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 we, we should not support include aromatherapy, cranial sacral therapy, hypnotherapy, uh, use of magnets and reflexology, methods of aligning forces, therapeutic touch, untested herbal remedies, repetitive colonic irrigation, that's colon cleanse, and urine therapy. These are just some examples of those things we should avoid. Now, what else should we be reminded of as we think of effective health ministry? We should remember that God always wants us to do our best in our ministry of service to others. I am struck by this quotation in the book, Desire of Ages, about Jesus. Jesus spent most of his time on earth working in a carpenter's shop, and he sought to do his best work in every line. He was not willing to be defective even in the handling of tools. He was perfect as a workman as he was perfect in character. And by his example, he teaches us to be industrious, to ensure that our work, including our health ministry, should be performed with exactness and thoroughness because it is work being done for God. You know, one of the implications of that, my brothers and sisters, God wants us to be accurate in the information we share in health ministries. And why? Councils on Health tells us on page 142 that if people, the people we are ministering to, see that we are intelligent with regard to health, the health information we share, they will be more ready to believe that we are sound in Bible doctrines. The converse is also true. If they see we are providing misinformation on the vaccines or any other health topic, we lose credibility and they are more ready to dispense and disbelieve the knowledge we are sharing about the goodness of God and his love for us. So it's part of our responsibility to God in our ministry of health that we are careful and accurate in what we teach and provide to others. What else is God looking for us to do in our health ministry? He wants us to be balanced. Uh, too many people who claim to be health reformers are not balanced. And Ellen White says, when men advocate reform and carry the matter to extremes and are inconsistent in their course of action, men and women are not to blame if they do become disgusted with the health reform because such persons who are not being balanced are doing a work which Satan loves to see go on. She also says, we don't make the health reform an iron bedstead, cutting people off or stretching them out to fit it. One person cannot be a standard for everybody else. What we want is a little sprinkling of good common sense. Don't be extremist, she counsels. And if you err, it would be better to err on the side of the people than on the side where you cannot reach them. Do not be peculiar. Do not be strange. Do not be off on a tangent just for the sake of being peculiar more there is real common sense in health reform ministry of healing page 319 the subject should be studied broadly and deeply again study to show ourselves approved and no one should criticize others because their practice is not in all things in harmony in harmony with his or her own it is impossible to make an unvarying rule to regulate everyone's habits and no one should think himself a criterion for all it continues, not all can eat the same things. Foods that are palatable and wholesome to one person may be distasteful and even harmful to another. Some cannot use milk while others thrive on it. Some persons cannot digest peas and beans. Others find them wholesome. For some, the coarser grain preparations are good food while others cannot use them. There is so much wisdom in the spirit of prophecy. Another point as we do this 
comprehensive Christ-centered health ministry, God does not want us to major in minors. One example that I have found is that for a lot of Seventh-day Adventists that I have encountered, they put great emphasis on not eating fruits and vegetables at the same meal. Now, we have no scientific evidence that I have looked for and I have seen none that indicates support for this. At the same time, Ministry of Healing does mention it. It says, it is not well to eat fruits and vegetables at the same meal. And then it continues with the very next words, if the digestion is feeble. So it's not a global statement. It says under certain conditions, if the digestion is feeble, then it's not a good idea. I have looked at the E.G. White estate to try to understand uh, the statements on fruits and vegetables. And the most helpful um, report I found was a letter from William T. Jarvis, who explained that John Harvey Keller believed and taught that fruits digested rapidly and vegetables digested slowly. And thus there was some incompatibility. And one day, Ellen White stopped by and said, what's up, what's new? And he told her about the work that he was doing about uh, fruits and vegetables. However, his subsequent research did not confirm what his early research did. And he, in fact, abandoned the idea. Um, we're not sure exactly where it came from, but I think um, she says this is true only if the digestion is feeble. It's not a global statement. And, and for some individuals, we shouldn't major in minors and shouldn't focus on something that is not central. Another point, God wants us in our service for him to be motivated by unselfish service. That's what good, effective, Christ-centered ministry does. And that means we avoid conflict of interest. And conflict of interest exists whenever they accrues to the individual profits from programs or activity within the church. Church members and church databases deserve protection from activities that may result in personal gains. So greed should play and selfishness should play no role in our ministry. And importantly, my brothers and sisters, when we talk about effective Christ-centered ministry, God wants us to minister like Jesus. What activated Jesus? The Bible tells the story that he was moved with compassion when he saw the multitudes. It was his love that moved him to action. The word became flesh and moved into our neighborhood. He dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In Christ's ministry, we saw he came and pitched his tent beside ours. He made God's love and compassion real to us. And that is what he is calling us to do. And we are called in the book, Ministry of Healing, to follow the only key to success in health ministry. Christ's methods alone gives us true success. Mingle with others as one who desires their good. Show sympathy. Meet their needs, win their confidence, and then bid them follow me. My brothers and sisters, God wants us in these closing moments of earth's history to minister to others through effective Christ-centered ministry that takes a balanced approach to what science says, to what the Bible says, to what the spirit of prophecy says, because we want to make real in the lives of others, what Jesus said, he came to give life and to give it to all of us more abundantly. It is my prayer that each of us would study to show ourselves approved of, to God, submit to him and let his Holy Spirit, invite his Holy Spirit into our lives so we can live each day to give honor and glory to God and, and minister, share God's love, make his love real as we minister through Christ-centered effect health ministry to others. May God bless you in this work.
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Williams. What a pleasure to again hear you give an exposition on comprehensive health ministry in such a meaningful, in-depth way. And uh, I, I sat here delighted and transfixed because I'm giving a talk later on. You have set the stage beautifully and we are absolutely delighted. Uh, Praise again, God. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to be among academics of your stature. And what makes us all comfortable is that you're my friend and all of us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Amen. David, if I may call you that, there have been a yes. lot of questions coming in. We're going to try and cover as many as we can. Sure. And um, the, the one question, is the vaccine adequately peer reviewed? The yes. vaccines. Yes. Um, the, the research on vaccines, I mean, literally, if you were to go to PubMed uh, is one of the databases that covers the medical literature, there are literally hundreds of papers that have been published so far looking at the vaccine. Some are looking at the vaccine in one country or another, and the FDA um, has I mean, is a peer review process. The FDA makes a final decision but they bring together a large number of scientists with expertise in the field who looks at the data that the pharmaceutical companies ha have presented and questions that data and, and then make, makes a decision. So to be honest with you, these vaccines have been studied more comprehensively, more thoroughly than, than many other vaccines and many other I would argue many other even health health therapeutics medicines and and so on that we are using so so that is not an issue the the one issue that i acknowledge is the 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 the, the effects the monitoring is relatively short term but keep yeah. in mind that the monitoring is ongoing so it was right. based on two months uh, of follow-up the the pfizer is about to any i'm not sure exactly when but in the next in a, in a matter of days or weeks will request full approval because they now have data for a much longer period of time. So th there is no, you don't honestly, this, the science is very good, it's very thorough. Um, and I don't think that should be something to worry about. And, and I don't want to embarrass you, Dr. Williams, but I will tell our audience that Dr. Williams is one of the foremost scientists, not only in the nation, but in the world. And so we are very blessed to have someone of his stature and caliber share this information with us. And in light of what you've just said, David, as well, the fact that the FDA is reviewing this, um, what about the World Health Organization? Can that data be trusted? Because there are people from all over the world on this meeting. So the vaccines we talk about, which are registered in the United States, does not necessarily apply, but I know, and you know, that there is a register on WHO. Can that be trusted? Yes. I mean, the, the WHO, I, I, I don't know that any human system is perfect, you know, <laughs> including you and me. But Well, but I'm glad looks, you included me. <laughs> I know, I know. But when, but when, when we look at, at the evidence, we do have credible information. And in addition to the WHO, we have different nation states. We saw that with the AstraZeneca vaccine in Europe, that there were some deaths. And, and keep in mind that the fact that a, a death, I can assure you that deaths will occur after someone has taken the vaccine. Why? Many people who've taken the vaccine are older. <laughs> Older people die. People die every day. So there, there are some people who will die after the vaccine. The question is, was the death caused by the vaccine or was it caused by some other underlying condition that the person has? So I would say, especially in, in, in Western industrialized countries, each, each government has their own systems of monitoring. I mean, some version of the FDA that, it, that we have in the United States. So I, I think that even when we saw something like um, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine that, that was paused because seven, uh, initially seven women had developed and one had died um, uh, blood clots, that is a sign that we have a safety system that's working. Because let me tell you, seven people out of seven million, 
um, getting a problem from the vaccine that is lower than the risk of women in that age group contracting the, uh, the COVID-19, and that is lower than the risk of uh, women in that age group dying from COVID-19. So, so that the, the, what I'm trying to say is that the risk level was actually very low. Seven out of seven million people with the problem, that is a very low risk. And, but yet the, 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 the administration of the vaccine was stopped reflecting that there is a serious uh, commitment to ensuring the safety of the populations and that everything is being monitored very carefully. Thank you very much. Uh, another question has said, is it true that there's a magnetic chip implanted in uh, the vaccine at the time of injection? Now, this is part of uh, what the uh, scientists have shown and, and discussed is a part of the conspiracy theories. But even so, the kind of chip that would need to be used, the, the size is such that it couldn't be injected. So yes. I, I have been vaccinated and, uh, you know, there was no magnetic chip possible in that little needle <laughs> that this stuck into my arm. Yeah. So uh, it is widely, I have seen, um, persons have sent me, um, um, you know, videos that claim this. Uh, this is, uh, when I said to beware of shocking uh, and look at the sources of the information you get, no, it, it's, it's not really even possible with the vaccines that we have. So that is absolutely one of the conspiracy theories that Dr. Landis just mentioned. Yes. Thank you. Um, have you been faced with the ethical question of what about those vaccines which have fetal cell lines in them? You know that uh, many of the vaccines produced prior to COVID-19 vaccines have used a fetal cell line. Now, the history of that fetal cell um, it's so sad that the history was so that there were apparently two fetuses which were sacrificed, uh, were aborted in the late 60s and the early 70s, but those cell lines have been propagated, have been kept, have been used over the decades. It's not a repetitive process. Now, um, a huge price was paid. We are thankful for the privilege that so many lives have again been saved because of that. By using these vaccines, are we supporting abortion? Um, some faiths have come out and said, well, and particularly the Jewish faith and the Roman Catholic Church have made a statement on this, but also included the fact that if there are no other vaccines available for the particular issue, that the adherents should use it. What sayest thou? No, I, I think you're right, um, um, Dr. Landless. You, you're absolutely correct. Um, uh, first, I want to be clear, it's not all of the vaccines that that is true of. So that is true, for example, of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which is likely to be the wi most widely used vaccine in the world, I believe it will be because it, it is more available and it doesn't require some of the special um, uh, storage and, 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 and freezing requirements that some of the other vaccines widely used in the US uh, require. But uh, I, I do agree with the position that the Catholic Church took on this, frankly, um, that if there was nothing else available, um, th this is the point. I, I, I watched, I've seen persons have sent me two videos. And if, if I listen to the video, I thought that babies were being aborted and, and, and the, these aborted babies, parts of the babies were being used. This is really, as, as Dr. Lannis explained, these are, are cell lines that are, are being generated in the laboratory. Yes, the original tissue was, was from... Um, an aborted fetus, and we do not now know uh, any details about that aborted fetus since it is many, many decades old. But it, it's a process that that takes place in the laboratory. You need you you need they, they use human cells to 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 test uh, the vaccine against human cells as opposed to some other cells. So I I honestly think there is not a a, a problem with using that. But if again. If, if someone feels that they, they, their conscience bothers them, then I would say there are, there are alternatives. Now, um, I am not sure, depending on where you are in the world, that there's an alternative for everyone 
uh, for that. In the United States, yes, you have, in fact, the US, the vaccines, you, Austra, Oxford AstraZeneca is not yet approved in the US. It probably will be in only a matter of time, but it is a problem with that one. And it may be a problem. I don't, I am not aware of all the other vaccines that are used in multiple other countries in the world, some of them created by China and other, other countries that are available elsewhere. But I, I would say it's not fundamentally a problem. Thank you so much, David. Uh, you enunciated so clearly in the beginning the importance of the health message. Yes. The importance of the holistic health message. Yes. And both you and I in our work and many of our colleagues around this call and in, in the world have faced the challenge that when one speaks favorably of vaccines, that it is thought that we are denying the importance of the health message. In fact, one questioner ask the question, are we making a lie of the eight natural laws? Now, you said, and I support what you've said, that we need to do everything we know we should do. We should follow the health message absolutely first, foremost, not only during the pandemic, right throughout our lives. Absolutely. And then in addition to that, use those things. Three things have been shown to improve longevity. It's not a heart transplants, chemotherapy, and dialysis. It's clean water, sanitation, and immunization. Yes. So would you sense that it's a denial of faith not to, to, to have the vaccine? No, it, it, I, I, it, it, uh, Ellen White used the vaccine um, um, as an example. And, and if you looked at the beginning of my presentation, I emphasized statements from her. She says, even when we pray for others, we then need to go to work with renewed energy using all that the Lord has provided for us to use. So the vaccines is one of the things that literally has saved millions of lives uh, around the world. In fact, some of the calculations are that it may literally save millions of lives each year globally on a, on a global perspective. So yes, this is one of the most effective public health strategies that is saving lives. So uh, we want to be responsible, we want to be comprehensive, and we want to, to recognize, uh, as I said earlier, that God is the greatest scientist. And every, every scientific discovery is a reflection of the mind of God, is a reflection of his brilliance. And, and he wants us to be responsible, but to use that which he has provided, all that he has provided. Thank you very much. You know, the question continues. Um, should I feel guilty if I don't take the vaccine? You know, you talked about vaccines being a personal choice, and I fully support that because that's exactly what it is. It's a personal choice. Yes. What is your thought? I, I, I mean, I, I think I, I, I cannot tell any individual what to do. At the end of the day, God wants each one of us to be true to our conscience as our conscience is exposes ourselves to all that the Lord has provided and listens to the Holy Spirit. So I, that what I'm encouraging you to do, I'm, I've said, it's, it's okay to ask. In fact, it's appropriate to ask the hard questions, but then let's study and let's look at everything and ask God to guide us and to lead us uh, in terms of making that decision. You know, time is running so quickly. I urge you yes. all to go to healthministries.com and you'll see if you go to the coronavirus at the healthministries, one word, dot com, look at the coronavirus, you'll see answers to many of the questions you have shared and, um, one of the questions that has come up is, is the virus part of the delivery of the mark of the beast? And in the statement we put out, along with biblical research with Loma Linda University and health ministries, this was addressed that the mark of the beast is really looking at a loyalty to a, a system which opposes the, the law of God. Right. and particularly as embodied in the fourth commandment. So I don't think that we have any question in our minds. In fact, I'm sure there's no question in our minds that the vaccine and the mark of the beast are two separate issues. 
I, I agree with you. And I, I think what that reminds me, and I would say this to all my brothers and sisters who are listening, you know, there are Seventh-day Adventist ministers who have preached this, that the vaccine may be the, the mark of, of the beast. And we are living in the time where, where, where each of us needs to study to show ourselves approved unto God. We are told in the last days there will be deceptions that may be so powerful that, that it may seem that even the very elect might, might be deceived. So we need to study and learn for ourselves so that we are informed and don't believe everything you hear. Be like the Bereans, go home and, and study it yourself and to see whether the things you heard were true. Thank you so much, David. And I'd like to reiterate another point because of a question that's come up. And that is that in the mRNA vaccines, of the Moderna and the Pfizer, there are no fetal cells. There has right. been no fetal, fetal cell use in those vaccines. So where there is that choice, as you pointed out, there is the option to take that. I had Moderna, I think you've had Moderna. Or I had, had Pfizer. But we've had that privilege. And yes. the, the question's also being asked, well, what are the safe vaccines around the world? You need to check. That's why it's important to look at the World Health Organization right. yeah. to see what they have registered, looking at rigorous testing, what is safe in your area. And there's another point. There are questions coming in about should we uh, have it if we've had allergies and so on. Speak to your health care provider. This is so important. Check with your physician. And... Um, we will be guided as we prayerfully move through this, this terribly difficult time. But I want to thank you, Dr. Williams, for sure. the time you've uh, given uh, a really comprehensive and uh, thorough and, for me, inspiring presentation because health ministries is our life. Yes, absolutely. It's what we do. It's our business. Absolutely. It's the master's business. Yes. And each of the people on this are medical missionaries. Amen. Serving Jesus. Amen. We are called to serve. Yeah. So even if we have disagreements, let's be kind to each other. Yes. Let's be respectful with one another. Let's not accuse one another. But together, by our love, they will know Amen. we are his disciples. Amen. Father in heaven, please be with us. Thank you for this time. We ask that you will bless each one. And as we move away, even made even if it is with unanswered questions, may it be with the, um, with the reassurance that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Be with each one, we pray. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name and a blessing on Dr. Williams' work. Continue to lead and guide him, we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you to God each bless one. you, everyone. And a joy to be with each of you. Yes.